We kick off today's journey through time with a shout out to our generous sponsors at Men's Shop Here. Where do men shop, you ask? Well, the answer is simple. Menshophere.com.here. You can add a touch of elegance and functionality to your day with their Ultimate 12 Watchbox Collection. This unique collection houses 12 different watches, each with its own charm. From smart watches for the tech savvy, survival watches for the adventurers, sport watches for the active, to dress watches for the fashion forward, and everything in between, there's something for every man's taste. But wait, there's more. For a limited time, you can grab this collection, worth over $8,000, for merely a fraction of the price. But you better hurry, these are going fast. So, remember, for the finest collections of watches, men shop. Here is your ultimate shopping destination. Now buckle up for a thrilling journey through history. Our journey commences with a leap into the past, where the seeds of vampire folklore took root in ancient civilizations. The deserts of Egypt and the islands of Greece millennia ago whispered tales of unnerving beings that sustained on the lifeblood of the living. In the heart of ancient Egypt, we encounter the goddess Sekhmet, notorious for her unquenchable thirst for blood. She was more than just a formidable warrior. Sekhmet, depicted with the head of a lioness, was considered the embodiment of the destructive force of the sun. Her stories often recounted her unleashing her wrath upon humanity, causing carnage and bloodshed, only to be appeased by the gods with a clever ruse involving beer stained the color of blood. The fear and respect for Sekhmet were palpable, reflecting a profound dread of blood-drinking entities that is a recurrent theme in vampire lore. Journeying westward to Greece, we meet the Striges, monstrous nocturnal birds. These creatures of legend were feared to swoop down silently in the night, draining the lifeblood from the unsuspecting victims. Striges were considered omens of disaster, their appearance a sign of impending doom. A direct threat to newborns and their mothers, they were often depicted with a woman's face and a bird's body. Another terror of Greek mythology was the Lamia, a woman doomed to eternally crave the blood of young men cursed by the goddess Hera, was transformed into a monstrous creature that devoured her children. Her insatiable thirst was a symbol of her endless grief, and she was said to prey on young men in vengeance. Archaeological proof substantiates these beliefs with unearthed graves revealing bodies weighed down by heavy objects, a probable measure to prevent the revival of the undead. Venturing further west to Rome, we see the evolution of Striges into the Strigoi, entities that were believed to drain the life force of the living. Strigoi were not limited to a single form. They could appear as animals, living people, or reanimated corpses, increasing the pervasive fear of them. They were seen as omens of death and disease, and rituals were performed to protect against them. These vampire-like figures were not simply elements folklore and fireside tales, they were manifestations of the unexplainable, the embodiment of the formless fears that dwell in the recesses of human consciousness. Unlike the suave, charismatic vampires of today's pop culture, these creatures were grotesque, feared, and often associated with malevolence. They were agents of chaos, harbingers of doom, and were alarmingly real to the people who fervently believed in them. These ancient civilizations had a profound fear of the undead, laying the groundwork for the vampire stories we know today. The vampire in all its terrifying splendor has been an inseparable part of our culture taking various forms for countless generations, and its journey is far from over. Journeying back to the Middle Ages, we find ourselves in an era when vampire hysteria was at its peak. The period's pervading darkness, filled with superstition and anxiety, fostered a perfect environment for vampire legends to sprout and grow. In Eastern, the vampire folklore varied greatly, reflecting the diverse cultures of these areas. The bloodthirsty Strigoi of Romania, a type of troubled spirits rising from the grave, were believed to transform into animals and become invisible, causing sickness and death in their wake. Further, the terrifying Nosferatu from Slavic regions were often depicted as being repelled by garlic and living in eerie, deserted places. Each society painted its own chilling depiction of this disturbing creature, but the central theme remained consistent an evil being drawing life from the living to fuel its own existence. Now let's explore in detail two infamous figures that have become synonymous with vampires in the Middle Ages, Vlad the Impaler and Elizabeth Bathory. Vlad III, commonly known as Vlad the Impaler, was a ruler of Wallachia in the 15th century, a region that is part of present-day Romania. His notorious cruelty, particularly his fondness for impaling his foes, 
cultivated an image of terror. His savage actions, coupled with his patronymic Dracula, would later become the muse for Bram Stoker's iconic vampire character. On the other side of this spectrum, stands the chilling story of Elizabeth Bathory, a Hungarian noblewoman often referred to as the Blood Countess. She is said to have bathed in the blood of virginal girls, convinced it would preserve her youthful appearance. This gruesome practice not only solidified her position in the chronicles of vampire lore, but also incited horror and repulsion. However, despite her monstrous deeds, she was never officially classified as a vampire. These narratives, as unsettling as they are, mirrored their times. The Middle Ages was a period fraught with uncertainty and trepidation, and the concept of vampires played into these fears. They symbolized death and disease, and their tales served as grim reminders, warning individuals of the dangers of deviating from societal norms. The vampire myths of the Middle Ages continue to both and frighten us to this day. They've been intricately woven into our literature, cinematography, and folklore, establishing a legacy that has stood the test of time. Whether they are portrayed as romantic entities or terrifying beasts, one fact remains unchanged. The vampires of the Middle Ages have etched a permanent mark on our collective imagination. Diving deeper into the Enlightenment era, we encounter a period where science and reason challenge the long-standing belief in vampires. This remarkable epoch, straddling the 17th and 18th centuries, was a time when the intellectual landscape underwent a dramatic transformation with the questioning of traditional beliefs and superstitions. Among these superstitions was the vampire myth that had been a source of dread and fascination. The hysteria surrounding vampires that had once consumed Europe began to lose its death-like grip. The thinkers of the Enlightenment era, armed with scientific reasoning, began to dissect and rationalize what was previously ascribed to vampirism. For example, they drew parallels between the symptoms of tuberculosis, which include a gradual wasting away of the body, and the traits attributed to vampires. Moreover, they provided clear explanations of decomposition process that bodies undergo after death. They clarified that the bloated appearance and presence of blood around the mouth of exhumed corpses were not signs of vampiric activity, but simply natural aspects of decomposition. Despite these scientific revelations, the Enlightenment era was not a homogeneous period. While certain regions readily accepted these scientific explanations, others remained anchored in their superstitions. Particularly in Eastern Europe, the belief in vampires endured. Intriguingly, even as science was busy demystifying vampire myths, literature and philosophy began to explore them in a new light. Vampires became metaphors and literary figures, signaling a shift in cultural perception. So as we delve deeper into the Enlightenment era, we see that while it triggered a decline in the literal belief in vampires, it also ignited renewed interest in these mythical creatures. Even in an era dominated by reason, the fascination with the vampire refused to fade away completely. Even an era of reason, the allure of the vampire was too strong to completely vanish. Finally, we arrive in the modern era where vampires have metamorphosed from grim creatures of the night into adored icons of pop culture. A pivotal point in this transformation was the late 19th century, marked by Bram Stoker's seminal work, Dracula. This novel did not just lay the groundwork for the modern vampire, it redefined it entirely. In Dracula, vampires were not just bloodthirsty beasts. They were transformed into intelligent and sophisticated, though still terrifying figures. Count Dracula, with his aristocratic demeanor and nuanced personality, was a far cry from the one-dimensional monsters of previous lore. Even though he was a creature of the night, his charm and sophistication made him a compelling figure, setting the stage for the vampires we see in pop culture today. As the 20th century rolled in, the vampire genre experienced an explosive growth. Centuries-old myths and folklore were reimagined and recreated in countless novels, films, and television shows. These narratives presented an array of vampire characters, each more distinct and complex than the other. The image of the vampire became multifaceted, reflecting the complexity and diversity of human nature. This was evident in the romantic and brooding Lestat from Anne Rice's interview with the vampire, who was as captivating as he was tormented. On the other end of the spectrum was the terrifying and monstrous Kurt Barlow from Stephen King's Salem's Lot, embodying our deepest fears and insecurities. The evolution of vampires continued well into the 21st century, with each portrayal adding another layer to enigmatic creatures. 
The Twilight series, for example, introduced a new generation to vampires. In this saga, vampires were presented as conflicted beings, grappling with their monstrous nature while yearning for love and normalcy. On television, shows like Buffy the Vampire Slayer, True Blood, and The Vampire Diaries brought vampires into the mainstream, offering a range of characters from the villainous and sadistic to the heroic and self-sacrificing. In modern popular culture, vampires are more than just creatures of horror. They are metaphors for our fears and desires, our struggles with identity and morality. They mirror our complexities, our contradictions, and our quest for meaning. From mysterious predators lurking in the shadows, they have evolved into complex characters who are as flawed, conflicted, and relatable as any human. From feared undead to charismatic anti-heroes, the evolution of vampires is a testament to their enduring appeal, their ability to adapt and evolve with the times. They have indeed come a long way since Bram Stoker's Dracula. Well, that was a thrilling journey through time, wasn't it? We've seen how the vampire myth has evolved over centuries. From ancient civilizations to the Middle Ages, through the Enlightenment era and into our modern popular culture, each era has had its own unique interpretation of the vampire, reflecting its fears, beliefs, and cultural context. We've seen them as monstrous creatures, illuminated scholars, romantic figures, and pop culture icons. It truly is fascinating how these legends have stood the test of time, constantly being reinvented and reinterpreted. A huge thank you to our friends at Men's Shop here. Don't forget to check out their Ultimate 12 Watch Box Collection. It's worth over $8,000 but for a limited time you can grab it for a fraction of the price. So, where do men shop? Well, they shop at menshophere.com.subscribe and like time travelers to continue this thrilling journey through time. Until our next adventure, stay curious and keep exploring.